Hey guys, Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Saturday afternoon here. Weather's beautiful today. But I was in here cleaning up some tools and decided to make a little short clip for you on some solder. I don't know if you took notice, but I have a separate craftsman box that sits on the top there. That box is dedicated just to electrical repair. It's a hobby I took up when I was a little kid and it progressed into something that has made me quite a bit of money in the past. I don't just do uh, electrical repairs on automotive, I also do it on TVs, computers, power supplies, you name it. If it could be fixed, I'm going to try to fix it. And uh, if it could save me money, I'm going to try to save myself money. And if I could save you guys money in the process, I, if I could teach you something, that'd be great. And uh, I'm not going to go into the real detailed stuff today. We're going to just scratch the surface, maybe do some solder joints, just some butt joints and uh, show you the correct way to do that or the way I do it. Anyways, it's a common task, like if you're installing a radio, you're going to want to get the adapter for your, your aftermarket system and you know, so it mates up to your OEM plug. So the best technique is to solder them. That way you don't have any problems down the road. And uh, there's a few tools that you need to do the job. I'll go over some of the stuff I use and uh, some of the equipment you need. And then if you guys like it, maybe I'll go into some more advanced videos for you and uh, go a little deeper with it. But for now, let's do some uh, solder joints. Okay, I'm going to give you a shot at the top. Some of the equipment I got and miscellaneous tools of the trade. You know, I got your regular multimeter, uh, miscellaneous solders, wires, magnetic wire, uh, speaker wire, some glue. All kinds of miscellaneous little nuts and bolts in that little container back there. Another meter. Uh, all kinds of miscellaneous stuff up there. And I come down here, I got a whole drawer just of different size shrink wrap. Another drawer dedicated to fuses and miscellaneous breakers. You can see me use stuff like that. Troubleshooting electrical problems in cars so I don't go through a lot of uh, fuses. That's just a miscellaneous drawer for the pens and brushes and stuff like that. There's another drawer that has some miscellaneous components in it. Here we have a couple electrolytic capacitors, uh, micro lamps. These are found in your stereos to illuminate them. They got to be soldered in as well. Uh, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in there. Uh, there's all your uh, wire connectors miscellaneous styles. Come down here, you know, you got your precision screwdrivers, these are tools for removing stereos. Uh, when, once you get into more advanced stuff like desoldering, that's a tool for desoldering components. That's also a desoldering wick. It's called a desoldering bulb. Uh, a few different electrical stuff. And you come down here, you got a few different style strippers. For stripping wires, some uh, smaller wire cutters, dikes, uh, different style needle nose pliers, uh, precision tweezers. But, uh, they come in real handy. A little precision uh, hammer. Okay, you come down here, you got, uh, you got miscellaneous jumpers. All kinds of wires, <clears throat> test lights. Come down to the next drawer, a different style. Heat guns, and you can also use that for soldering. A little torch, uh, different style of soldering irons, different heat ranges. More percentage stuff, even have one of them cold heat. You can have one of the cold heat ones. That works pretty well, but for the most part, that thing collects dust. All right, now you got a shot at that. Let's get to work. Now right, here's some miscellaneous tools I'm going to be using for this this demonstration. I'm going to be using a heat gun to shrink the heat tubing, the shrink wrap. Uh, a couple miscellaneous wire strippers. It's just a matter of preference, whatever ones you want to use. Uh, a pair of cotton pliers, aka dykes, 
some heat shrink tubing for the gauge wire you're going to use. You want to use the correct heat shrink. Uh, some rosin core solder and of course a soldering gun and then this nifty device for holding the, the joint I'm going to be soldering. So uh, that should do it. Okay, let's get started. Here I just had two connectors I, uh, off a of power supply from a computer. You might recognize that. I just took and uh, cut them in half. Now I'm going to solder them back together just for demonstration. You're going to want to take and strip your wires. I know this is probably right around a 14 gauge or so. So. I usually strip them back about a quarter to a half inch. Okay, once you got them all stripped, I'm going to take your shrink tubing and cut it into lengths. I got four pieces cut here already, a little over an inch. Just want to make sure you cut them so it goes past each end of your joint. A little ways. And that's going to take the place of the insulation, and this uh, works real well. It's the recommended method. It's a lot better than using electrical tape and other techniques. Okay, and then on this other side, I'll let's take a little bigger piece. I'll slide over everything when I'm done. But you don't have to do this. Okay. And you could do this a couple different ways. You could take them and slide them together like that and give them a couple little twist. Do your joint like that. What I do, especially if I don't have something to hold it, I'll take and I'll cross them. Just like that. Take and pull each end, twist them together. And you're left with something that looks like that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you're left with that. Okay. I'll take and I'll do that to each one. Once you're done, you'll be left with something that looks like that. Get it all set up in your, uh, your holder. And zoom. Okay, now the fun part. Now you could take and wipe some flux on this if you really wanted to. I know these wires are nice and clean. You take and heat up your soldering iron nice and hot. Get that nice and hot. What I do, I place the soldering iron right underneath the wire. Push that one down out of the way. Get the next one. Nice and hot. Hold it underneath the wire. You know when it's high enough. I'm starting on the solder. There you go, it's starting to get high enough. I'll just feed it in. It's a B 
Beautiful joint. I don't know if you can see that. So I give you a better shot at the top one. underneath there nice and hot give it a couple seconds you know when it's hot enough okay there it goes let's suck it in down in between it Beautiful joint. Okay. The next one. Get that nice and hot. Get it up underneath there. Get it nice and hot. Okay, let that cool for a couple seconds. Okay. I always look to make sure I don't have any pointy spots. I might stick through the insulation. Here I do, I'll just take and knock them down a little bit. Okay, the rest of them feel good. Now you're going to want to take your heat shrink tubing, slide it up over your solder joints. Okay. I'm going to try to keep an even amount on each side. Okay, get them all right in the middle. And you want to take the heat gun. You can use a cigarette lighter on this too. Right down that string grass. You can see it mold that wire nice. All right, so once you get the, get all that heat shrink wrap done, as you see, it wraps the solder joint nice. That's what you're going to want to look for. Let me zoom in here. I don't know if you can see that good, but that shrink wrap works great. Wraps in tight, insulates it, and uh, protects it. All right, next we're going to slide that back. Is that where you want it?
All right, there you have it, guys. There it is all complete. I mean, you don't have to go through putting that little piece in the middle. I do it to keep it, protect it, and uh, make it look a little more professional. <clears throat> if you had more room, you could go longer with it. Or if you want to take the time and take out every little connector, you could do that and then insulate it longer. But for the most part, that'll, that'll last forever. Like I said before, that's one of your most common entry level soldering joints, and it's used quite often. Probably one of your most commonly used soldering joints. And uh, like I said, you can use them a lot on uh, installing radios, aftermarket stereo systems, and it's the best fail safe way to do it. There's other alternatives out there. There's the route of uh, wire nuts, crimp connection, butt connections. But uh, once you get into multiple connections like that, I don't really suggest doing that because. Later on down the road there might be a complaint and you'll find that you didn't have that one of those connections crimped 100%. So to save yourself a headache, take the extra time, it might cost a little extra money, but solder it, heat shrink it, and you can guarantee and the customer can rest assured that they'll never have a problem with that connection. It's 100% as good as new if not better and, uh, and you can guarantee it. So like I said we can always take this to the next level if you guys want to Another video on desoldering, resoldering, replacing components. I'll be more than happy to throw something up for you. And um, you'll learn from me, it doesn't have to be automotive related. I take on the task of doing many things. If it can save me money, and if I think I can fix it, I'm going to take it on. I like a challenge, and I always like an adventure. It may not always work out in the end, but for, for the most part, it ends up saving me money. And if it was garbage to begin with, and I can learn something from it, I'm going to try my best to get it to work again. So, that's just the way I am, and I'm sure there's many, many of you out there just like that. So, if I could help, or if you have any suggestions that might help me out, I'm open. And, uh, like I said, I learn something new every day, and I like to share it with you guys. So, until next time, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe. That's all I ask. And, uh, have yourself a good weekend, guys. I'm out.